So John, tell the people what you're doing. John said he's trying to power his instrument array. This is called Pico Hydro Power. And that big white pipe goes way up the hill. To a manifold intake screened thingy in a pool we made with sandbags filled with gravel. And now John is gluing the jets in place that will shoot the water against the blades of the turbine, spin it, spin current through our wire up to our batteries there and over there and thereby power the antenna array so that we can collect data because we are not collecting data in this raging storm which really sucks. So here again, John lounging in the creek. That's what grad school is all about, right John? It's a beautiful day, isn't it? Yeah. This is Oregon. This is the Oregon Coast Range. It is March, where is today? The 8th, 9th? After drought for most of the winter, it's been raining like crazy since sometime in February. So you see that gray thing, that is the permanent magnet alternator. And then the, you see those blades on there, on that turbine. And then we got these little jets, these little brass nozzles you can just see there at the end of that white pipe. So that's gonna shoot water out. That hooks up, those pipes, those jets, hooked up to those pipes, are hooked up to a four-way manifold, which is hooked up to this reducer here from the two-inch pipe down to what's the smaller pipe diameter? Three-quarter and then half. Three-quarter and then half. And, uh, and you see there's a, a quarter turn ball valve up there, that red thing. And uh, we already had the pipe burst on us once, but it was probably because it fell off of John's truck. So when we open that valve, that water will come streaming out of there through this pipe. We're not going to leave it uh, tied up to the tree like it is right now. We've got this bucket here. We'll set that on these gravel bags, or at least on one of them. Put the other gravel bags around it and make sure the water gushing out doesn't erode the ground out from underneath it. But for now, we've got the bucket off so we can get the nozzles in place and make sure that thing works. So far, we tested it once without gluing it, and this one here popped off, but even with water shooting out of that and bypassing the jet, the other jets were shooting hard enough to make the turbine go faster than we could see. That is faster than the eye could follow. So bye for now. I'll let John finish gluing. I'll let the glue dry for a bit and then uh, we'll fire it up. So me again. We haven't fired up the generator yet, but I wanted to show you these log dams. This is the downstream one that we designed with the help of the Forest Service biologist Justin Gerding and Jack Sleeper. And the idea here was that you'd create some kind of backwater behind it at high water. <laughs> you can see that flow is really ripping through that stretch there, but those roots sticking into the channel would somewhat confine the flow against this bank here and actually cause some bank erosion, which is what we wanted so that even as you impound some sediment upstream of some of these log dams that through the bank erosion you liberate some source of sediment for the downstream reach. And as you can see, there's a, I think you can see that, clump of bank material that has collapsed this year within the past 
few weeks since the water came up. So it is working. And similarly, the upstream one shows ample evidence of abundant recent bank erosion, uh, evidence being overhanging vegetation mat. Anyway, check it out. They brought these in by helicopter. While we're waiting for the glue to dry, I figured I'd show you some of these uh, the instrumentation here. So this here is a tuning box. See the black wire coming in that comes from the box housing our data logger and multiplexer and batteries and now the hookup from the, current, from the new generator. And these wires coming out the bottom are basically the antenna. And they go into the creek and you can see the lovely reed canary grass is snagged all over the antenna and bowing it quite a bit and of course you know you can't measure it without affecting it or adding some additional roughness to the channel bed here but that's life so that the idea here is that the current goes through the antenna charges the little pit tags which then send a signal and ping the antenna as they go skipping by now right over there i think you can sort of see sticking out of the ground a pipe with a white cap on it and some flagging tied around it that is one of our piezometers and over here you can see some more orange flagging tucked under some of those branches that fallen tree stuff that's another piezometer so that we've got the logging the water surface elevation upstream and downstream of the antenna and in combination with surveying the cross section of the channel we can get the total boundary shear stress because once we know the discharge and the cross section we can find the depth the width and the velocity and the changes in those things are related to the total boundary shear stress so we can thereby calculate the total boundary shear stress now that's not the shear stress that's actively moving sediment because total boundary shear stress is partly taken up by these logs, storm drag off of those. But it's a start. Alright, we can't wait any longer. We're going to fire it up. Sean is going to turn the valve. Water is going to start shooting out. Oh, yes, yes. She goes. Hard to see exactly, but that turbine is spinning. Yeah. That's eight? That's only an eighth of a quarter turn valve. Yeah, crank it. You can hear the, uh, the turbine rattling away now. Is that full of power? That's it. We're figuring if we get some more money, buy some more, another alternator or two, we could we could live out here. Yeah. I mean, you can kind of detect the the movement of it by because it's slightly asymmetric. Or, you know, uneven a little bit, so you can see it sort of, the edge kind of going up and down. Oh, I'm going to water on the lens, so I'll cut it out for now. All right, well, there she goes. We're turning. We are cranking power, and we're going to see if we can measure some current now and uh, see what we got. So uh, we just measured the current here, and John just toasted the, the wires on the probe. <laughs> we grew up getting like 20 amps, which is a lot. I'm actually a little worried about the amount of current we're putting through those wires, but maybe I'll see how hot they're getting. We've got one battery hooked up there. All these batteries are in parallel. And then we've got the wire all the way to the other batteries as well. So if we're getting basically 20 amps here, but we are cranking some juice. <laughs> John had it on there and I saw the wire start smoking. It's like, ah!